McDonnell Douglas FA-18C, known as the Hornet. The FA-18C Hornet is twin-engine, supersonic fighter that is flown by a single pilot in a glass cockpit. It combines extreme maneuverability, a deadly arsenal of weapons, and the ability to operate from an aircraft carrier. Operated by several nations, this multi-role fighter has been instrumental in conflicts from 1986 to today. Is Texaco the left or right one? Uh, Texaco's the left one, Marco's the right one. Okay. You're taking fuel. Operational history and entry into service. McDonnell Douglas rolled out the first FA-18A on September 13, 1978, in blue on white colors marked with Navy on the left and Marines on the right. Its first flight was on November 18. In a break with tradition, the Navy pioneered the principal site concept with the FA-18, where almost all testing was done at Naval Air Station Patuxent River instead of near the site of manufacture, and using Navy and Marine Corps test pilots instead of civilians early in development. In March 1979, Lieutenant Commander John Paget became the first Navy pilot to fly the FA-18. Following trials and operational testing by VX-4 and VX-5, Hornets began to fill the fleet replacement squadrons VFA-125, VFA-106, and VMFAT-101, where pilots are introduced to the FA-18. The Hornet entered operational service with Marine Corps Squadron VMFA-314 at MCOS El Toro on January 7, 1983, and with Navy Squadron VFA-25 on July 1, 1984, replacing F-4s and A-7ES, respectively. Navy Strike Fighter Squadrons VFA-25 and VFA-113, assigned to CVW-14, deployed aboard USS Constellation from February to August 1985, marking the first deployment for the FA-18. Hey, killing is killing it. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. It's been a All right. Uh, me too. I've only refueled one time with an 18. All right, I'm refueled. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in line with you guys.
Yeah. Oh, shit. Sure. Mine's 58.
The initial fleet reports were complementary, indicating that the Hornet was extraordinarily reliable, a major change from its predecessor, the F-4J. In January 1985, the VFA-131 Wildcats and the VFA-132 Privateers moved from Naval Air Station Lemoore, California to Naval Air Station Cecil Field, Florida to become the Atlantic Fleet's first FA-18 squadrons. VFA-151, VFA-161, VFA-192 and VFA-195 transitioned to the FA-18A in 1986. With the exception of VFA-161, the rest would move to NAF at Suji, Japan to join CVW-5 and the USS Midway. Other squadrons that switched to FA-18 included VFA-146 Blue Diamonds and VFA-147 Argonauts. when they turn. Blue Angels No. 6 FA-18A The U.S. Navy's Blue Angels Flight Demonstration Squadron switched to the FA-18 Hornet in 1986, replacing the A-4 Skyhawk. The Blue Angels performed in FA-18A, B, C, and D models at air shows and other special events across the U.S. and worldwide before transitioning to the FA-18 EF Super Hornet in late 2020. Blue Angels pilots must have 1,400 hours and an aircraft carrier certification. The two-seat B and D models were typically used to give rides to VIPs, but also filled in for other aircraft, if such a need arose. Oh my god. Told you I've only done it once. Oh, I know. Take your time. And if you get in trouble, there is an airfield where we can land or we can land on the carrier. Right now, okay. I think, yeah, pretty much I believe we're supposed to land. If we got problems, there's Sochi. Yeah, we can land at Sochi, which is north of here. The carrier is pretty good too. Sons of bitches. Yeah, that happens. NASA operates several FA-18 aircraft for research purposes and also as chase aircraft. These FA-18s are based at the Armstrong Flight Research Center, formerly the Dryden Flight Research Center, in California. 
NASA received three two-seat F-A-18B aircraft in 2018. On September 21, 2012, two NASA F-A-18s escorted a NASA Boeing 747 shuttle carrier aircraft carrying the Space Shuttle Endeavour over portions of California to Los Angeles International Airport before being delivered to the California Science Center Museum in Los Angeles. Oh my lord. You're so low, come on, you're right on there, you're doing good. Ah, oh, no, man, like, damn. Combat Operations The F-A-18 first saw combat action in April 1986 when VFA-131, VFA-132, VMFA-314, and VMFA-323 Hornets from USS Coral Sea flew suppression of enemy air defense SEAD, missions against Libyan air defenses during Operation Prairie Fire and an attack on Benghazi as part of Operation L. Dorado Canyon. During the Gulf War of 1991, the Navy deployed 106 F-A-18 AC Hornets and Marine Corps deployed 84 F-A-18 AC D Hornets. F-A-18 pilots were credited with two kills during the Gulf War, both MiG-21s. On January 17, the first day of the war, U.S. Navy pilots Lt. Commander Mark I. Fox and Lieutenant Nick Mongilio were in a flight of four Hornets when they were sent from USS Saratoga in the Red Sea to bomb airfield H-3 in southwestern Iraq. While en route, they were warned by an E-2C of approaching bandits or Iraqi MiG-21 aircraft. The Hornets shot down the two MiGs with AIM-7 and AIM-9 missiles in a brief dogfight. It took 40 seconds from when the bandits appeared on the radar of the E-2 until both aircraft were shot down. The F-A-18s, each carrying four 2,000 pounds, 910 kilograms of bombs, then resumed their bombing run before returning to Saratoga. Sons of bitch. 
Well, at least I made it to 84. Oh! Yep, he's dropping off. He's out of. He's running out of fuel. All right, time to head back to the carrier. Or he can say something. I mean, jeez. They're supposed to say something, but of course this is a sim, not not real life, unfortunately. All right, the ta the tack end for the carrier is 17 X-ray. ICLS is 20. Is which one again? What's tacking? Uh, tack end is 17 X-ray. 17. Okay. ICLS is 20. Okay. All right. I'll give you priority for the carrier. Okay, I see the I see the carrier out at zero five zero. Roger. All right. My Tekken's not working. Uh, did you turn it on? Yeah. It has on on the left side of the HSD. Yeah. Okay, there we go. says it's over there at 16. The Hornet's survivability was demonstrated when a Hornet took hits in both engines and flew 125 miles, or 201 kilometers back to base. It was repaired and flying within a few days. FA-18s flew 4,551 sorties with 10 Hornets damaged including three losses, one confirmed loss to enemy fire. All three losses were U.S. Navy F-A-18s, with two of their pilots lost. On January 17, 1991, Lieutenant Commander Scott Spiker of VFA-81 was shot down and killed in the crash of his aircraft. An unclassified summary of a 2001 CIA report suggests that Spiker's aircraft was shot down by a missile fired from an Iraqi Air Force aircraft, most likely a MiG-25. On January 24, 1991, FA-18A Bureau No. 163121, from USS Theodore Roosevelt, piloted by Lieutenant H.E. Overs, 
was lost due to an engine failure or loss of control over the Persian Gulf. The pilot ejected and was recovered by USS Wisconsin. On February 5, 1991, FA-18A Bureau No. 163096, piloted by Lt. Robert Dwyer, was lost over the North Persian Gulf after a successful mission to Iraq. He was officially listed as killed in action, body not recovered. As the A-6 intruder was retired in the 1990s, its role was filled by the F-A-18. The F-A-18 demonstrated its versatility and reliability during Operation Desert Storm, shooting down enemy fighters and subsequently bombing enemy targets with the same aircraft on the same mission. It broke records for tactical aircraft in availability, reliability, and maintainability. Yeah. All right. And then stay back to my DME and then wait for you to land then. All right. Watch out, come in. You going for the flight? You're going for the flight cam behind the carrier? No, I just said watching. Oh, 
good. Both U.S. Navy FA-18AC models and Marine FA-18CD models were used continuously in Operation Southern Watch and over Bosnia and Kosovo in the 1990s. U.S. Navy Hornets flew during Operation Enduring Freedom in 2001 from carriers operating in the North Arabian Sea. Both the FA-18AC and newer FA-18EF variants were used during Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003, operating from aircraft carriers as well from an air base in Kuwait. Later in the conflict, USMC A plus C and primarily D models operated from bases within Iraq. Got it. Yeah, I'm getting it. Last wire. Three wire. Oh, last wire. Last wire. Alright. Oh no, he got the three wire. Oh, cut three wire? Oh, cool. An FA-18C was accidentally downed in a friendly fire incident by a Patriot missile when a pilot tried to evade two missiles, fired at his plane and crashed. Two others collided over Iraq in May 2005. The USMC plans to use the FA-18 until the early 2030s. How do you do this? I need to work on this one. How do I do a case two landing? Yeah. You have in to the cloud fog like that. You have to rely on your instruments a lot more. What I've got is I got my HSI up on my right with my TAC and my ILS on. From there, I'm purely using my instruments to gauge it. I know I'm about 23 miles out, and I just got to slow. How do you get out and walk around? Yeah, you have to eject if you want to get out and walk around. Oh, because I usually, uh, there was this button I used to press, I forgot what it was, it was so long ago. You press it and it lets you get out. Well, if you can do that, I can't remember what that is. 
I, I can't remember either. Maybe they took it off, but you could get out and walk around. anything. I'm yeah. watching you right now. The last operational deployment of the FA-18C Hornet in U.S. Navy service was aboard the USS Carl Vinson, and ended on March 12, 2018. The aircraft briefly went back to sea for routine carrier qualifications in October, but it was retired from active Navy service on February 1, 2019. The type continued to be used by reserve units, primarily for adversary training. The actual final Navy FA-18C operational flight occurred on October 2, 2019. Too bad everyone doesn't. Too bad everyone doesn't have the mod, and we could be super hornets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that'd be nice. That sh that should be a mandatory thing. Get the super hornet mod. Actually, Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm talking for the squadron because we have hornets. Yeah. And everyone you please. All super one is now, so. and it's a free mod. Too bad everyone can't get that one. Cause it's the same thing. I don't understand why they're on the runway right now.
landed right nice. there. Nice. Guys, but I caught wire three. That was a good one. Good job. All right, he wants to try a BBR. We want to do some more formation flying. Uh, how about some ground pounding?